Welcome to McNeil Tech, the wash experience. My name is Scott Ferry and I work for Budco, a distributor of McNeil wash systems. Today we're going to talk about the replacement of the impeller inside the dryer producer. Now there's two methods that you can use to replace the impeller. One involves removing the power lock, the inlet screen and the inlet cone to access the impeller. The other one is to remove the entire housing altogether. So we're going to demonstrate the second method as it's easier to line things up when you're in the reassembly process. When working on any equipment, understand all the hazards associated with the task. Before starting any work, lock out and tag out the equipment. Take all necessary safety precautions including personal protective gear, which includes, but is not limited to, safety glasses, gloves, and footwear. To remove the blower housing, we simply need to remove these 12 screws. By removing the housing itself, this does allow us to have everything that's kept in perfect alignment so when we reassemble it, we don't have to adjust the inlet cone, as opposed to the other method of removing the power lock, the inlet screen, and the inlet cone. So the other thing we need to do is disconnect our air lines going to the power lock. So we've turned off the air in the back in the equipment room and we're just going to kind of get this out of our way for now. And then we can go ahead and proceed to remove the 12 screws. Once the blower housing is removed, then that allows us easy access in here to remove the taper lock. Now, we've gone ahead and loosened the screws here, but the one thing that we have to do before we remove this is we have to mark the alignment of the taper lock with the impeller. Now this would be done in the case if you were replacing the uh, motor and you needed to remove the, remove the impeller in order to put a new motor on. But if you do that, you just do it with a Sharpie, making sure that you have a clear mark that marks where that taper lock is in relation to the impeller itself. So to remove this, there's two things you have to do. You first have to, to loosen these screws here, and then you're gonna take those and place them in these holes right here. And what you're gonna do is by alternating, tightening very slowly each of these three screws, it'll allow you the, the taper lock to be removed. But there's also a set screw right here that holds the, uh, that holds the key in place. And so that's an eighth inch Allen wrench that you get in there to loosen that. So with that set screw loosened, then you can go ahead and start tightening these down to remove the taper lock. Okay, and then you just, again, you tight, slowly tighten just a little bit at a time. Now the impeller is free and we can go ahead and remove it from the shaft of the motor. So now we can use the gear puller to remove the taper lock. And so this one we've already got kind of loose here, but you can just take this taper lock or this gear puller and pull this taper lock. Now once the taper lock is removed, then you can remove the impeller. Now the one thing to mention here too is the taper locks are matched to the impeller. So once you remove or replace an impeller, that taper lock needs to go in the same place the used, the used uh, impeller is. There'll be a new taper lock that comes with a new impeller and use that new taper lock and make sure it matches the positioning on the impeller. So we'll go ahead and take this off. With the impeller down and accessible here, we just want to take a few minutes to show you where the common failures on the blower impeller are. So first of all, on the back plate, you'll see that sometimes we get cracks that start to develop around the welds. And so that's something that needs to be inspected or at least recognized. 
The other thing that's, that we'll see is that these welds on the veins right here will fail and then the, uh, the vein itself will collapse and, and uh, fall back against the vein and back of it. Now when this happens, it creates a lot of vibration and noise in the impeller. The other thing that's also important to pay attention to is that over time, dirt will start to build up on the edges of the veins. And when that happens, it kind of does it in a symmetrical fashion, but then over time you might have a piece of that dirt that breaks off and then that is enough to create an imbalance in the impeller. So these screws around the outside are inserted to dynamically balance this impeller. So if you look at the weight of one of these screws and how little that is, you can see that dirt and buildup that starts to fall off could cause a problem. When installing the impeller, uh, it's really important to make sure that you reference the marks that you made on the taper lock and on the impeller. Now this would be in the case of an impeller or a motor replacement where you're putting the same impeller back on the motor. If this happened to be a new impeller, it would come out from the factory marked uh, with the proper orientation. So we're going to align those marks and then we can use the screws on the taper lock to draw the impeller into position. Now the impeller when it's fixed on the shaft with the taper lock bushing should be about 15 sixteenths from this plate on the back. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this into position and once that's tightened back down it's really important to remember to lock the uh, key back in position by tightening the set screw right here with an allen wrench. To replace the blower housing, it's important to make sure that your orientation is right. You could mark it before, or if you forget to mark it, you can always use the raised lettering on the back of the impeller, which should be directly over the top of the motor. And of course, the other thing to do too, is when you're putting the blower housing on, don't tighten any of the screws until you have all of them started and hand tight. That allows you to shift around a little bit to be able to get all the screws started. But then once you've got it in place, then you can go ahead and tighten everything down. And then you can reconnect your air lines. And at this point, it's going to be really important to test fire the motor. Turn it on and listen for any rubbing or any grinding noises, just in case you don't have the blower housing aligned properly in relation to the impeller. If you do hear something, shut it down, readjust, and do so until everything is working properly. Once the work is complete and the conditions deemed safe, the lockout tagout can be removed. Thank you for joining us at McNeil Tech, The Wash Experience.